Hi, this is Joe Cook with the Arizona Geological Survey at the University of Arizona. And today I'm just going to give you a brief talk on a project we completed this year, which was landslide mapping along the Interstate 17 corridor in central Arizona. Uh, although I'm giving the talk, Brian Guti, also with AZGS, did a ton of work. And uh, I'd like to share these details with you. So here's an overview of the study area for this project. Uh, basically, what we're looking at here is our 15-mile wide zone that is centered on Interstate 17 from just north of Phoenix up to Flagstaff, Arizona. And the reason we chose this as the study area is uh, we were aware of a bunch of previously known landslides that were in close proximity to Interstate 17. Um, and in addition to that, we knew that they were planning on widening the freeway in the Black Canyon City area down here. So you can see there's just like a ton of landslides right along this freeway alignment. And if they're planning on modifying the footprint of the freeway here, it seems like it would be useful to have a more accurate map of where landslides exist in that zone. All right, so a brief overview of what I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, we'll start with background info. What did we know before we started this project? Why are we doing this work? What's our motivation? Uh, go into the methods and tools that we had on this project, data sets, that sort of thing. And then I'll, I'll give you a brief rundown of the results. What do we know now that we've done the project? Okay, so the starting point is uh, basically a database we worked on about five years ago called ASLID. It stands for Arizona Statewide Landslide Inventory Database. And basically what ASLID is, is a big compilation geodatabase that has all the information we could find on landslides and debris flows in Arizona. So we took old USGS, AZGS, uh, scientific papers, publications, figures, anything that mentioned landslides in Arizona and put them all into this geodatabase. Uh, we also added features that we interpreted for modern topographic data, things like Google Earth, um, some of the DEMs can pick out big landslide features. Um, we added those, but we were not able to field verify them. So the drawback is, you know, some of these are interpreted but not verified landslide features. Um, so as SLID starts, it, it provides a good starting point with lots of room for improvement. Okay, so what's the motivation for a study like this? Uh, one really good example, I think, is uh, from February of 2013. We basically had a failure within a landslide block. Here we have uh, annotation that shows this Bitter Springs landslide block and AZ-89 that kind of curves along through it. Uh, and what we had happen in February 2013 was a small portion of this landslide block failed. Not the whole thing, but just a small little thin-skinned part of it, but it happened right where the highway is. Uh, resulted in over $60 million in damages, repairs, reroutes. Um, and we knew about this. We knew it was a landslide deposit. They built the road here anyways. There wasn't a really good alternative. Um, but this is what can happen if you put important infrastructure through something like a landslide. Um, so the geologic setting for this is basically a rigid layer on top, in this case, the Navajo sandstone, atop something like something that includes shale and clays, in this case, the Chinle formation. So if you have a rigid cap on unconsolidated sediment, especially those with clays that can get wet and, and deform, you can get landslides. Here's some ground photos from this, this event in February 2013. You can see the, the highway is basically just destroyed, it's offset, slumped down just a little bit, but clearly big disaster for the 89. And here's just kind of a farther back view where you can see kind of the limits of what slipped within this much larger landslide block. Okay, so within the study area, we kind of uh, group these into five main areas. Areas one, two, and three are pretty close to each other. Black Canyon City, Agua Fria Canyon, and the Sunset Point Rest Area. Uh, area number four is in the Verde Valley. This includes some new slides that we did not have in ASLID before. And area number five is basically the interchange between Highway 179 going towards Sedona and Interstate 17. Uh, we also found a bunch of kind of remote, remotely located and isolated landslides that are nowhere near I-17, but are within the study area. Okay, so first step we did was to do kind of a survey, a topographic survey of all of the study area. And in the past, we've been limited to DEMs and hillshades at 10 meter resolution. Some states have LIDAR, we don't. 
Uh, but we were very lucky that right about the time we started this project, we had this new NAEP point cloud data set. Basically, it's just a point cloud data that is extracted from overlapping portions of air photos to create uh, digital terrain models, and then you can make hill shades. But basically, you go from a 10 meter resolution hill shade to a one meter, and all of a sudden you can start to see all these kind of telltale landslide topographies, these blocky textures. So it made finding new slides and improving the limits of the mapping on existing slides much easier. It's really good stuff. You can uh, even do really reliable elevation profiles. Uh, this is a landslide along the Agua Fria River. And uh, you can see it here at A, we're up on the top of the mesa at number one, coming down across all this blocky texture down to the Agua Fria River A prime. That's really neat. Okay, so the first of our five main areas, uh, I just want to kind of just give a brief overview, is the Black Canyon City area. So I labeled these these polygons one, two, and three, just to kind of show the the ones that directly impact I-17. And you can see that you know one, two, and almost three affect both lanes, northbound and southbound on I-17. You know, so we have road cuts through landslide deposits. We have these strongly back tilted beds. Uh, you know, there's rock fall hazard where these landslides are cut. And we don't really know how unstable, maybe they're stable, maybe they're not, but they are a landslide deposit. So it's good information to have. And I'm not really aware of what the, the proposed widening footprint is, but knowing where these landslide deposits would be useful if I was planning to, to widen a freeway through here. Here's a, a figure that will be in the report that basically shows kind of like a compilation of our uh, field, field data. You can see a bunch of strike and dip attitudes right along the roadway. You can see uh, drone or UAV collected topographic data, and you have topographic profiles with cross sections of the landslide deposit. Another really nice thing I like is uh, the drone data can get these really nice oblique air photos that are very useful for sharing with uh, people that may not be geologists or anyone just needs help visualizing, you know, what does this landslide look in the landscape? You know, here you can see in context, like, yeah, this is the landslide deposit and this is where it came from. So it just helps visualize. Here's another example from, uh, I think it was landslide number three in the Black Canyon City area. Uh, we call this the Maggie Mine Slide, but it's a really steep topography that's cut, cut by I-17. And uh, once you know it's a landslide and you start looking at those road cuts, it makes you wonder. Here's some examples from the uh, Agua Fria Canyon. This is basically just the Goldilocks zone for landslides in this area. Kind of like the Bitter Spring slide, we have a similar geologic setting. Uh, in this case, we have these rigid basalt caps, Black Mesa, Perry Mesa, over these Chalk Canyon sediments, uh, Chalk Canyon, Closed Basin, and Lacustrine beds. Basically, are the same thing that they have, uh, you know, some clays and, and other fine grain deposits that, if they were to get wet, they can plastically deform, and you have this rigid cap on top that can't bend, and so you end up getting these landslide deposits. Uh, wherever you have this geologic setting with enough incision and topographic relief, we tend to see these clusters of landslides. There's an oblique aerial view. Uh, these are these are figures we used on a blog to just kind of convey to the public what we were working on, and it really helps show uh, with the annotation the setting and uh, you know what geologic features are near an area that lots of people drive by and don't even know are there in some cases. It's a good way to convey information. Uh, Sunset Point Rest Area is one of the busiest rest areas in Arizona. I'm not sure what percent of the people that visit know that there's a huge landslide complex just off the western edge of the mesa. Uh, you know, another drone shot that kind of shows the, the distribution of, you know, these basalt rubble beds that are they're basically like just big chunks of this black mesa that have been back rotated and slipped down uh, chaotically into this landslide complex. Our fourth landslide area is in the Camp Verde area. Here we are along Highway 260. Uh, so it's not right along I-17, but it's within the bubble. Uh, and basically these, these landslide features were not in ASLID. Uh, we noticed these in the NAEP data um, in the beginning parts of this project. And then when we got to go field verify, sure enough, a bunch of landslides in a, in a similar geologic setting. In this case, you have rigid cap, which is Verde formation limestones over Lacustre and closed basin beds. It's all within the Verde formation. Some of these come really close to 260 and some homes. I mean, these are older features. They don't appear active, but 
nevertheless, they're landslide deposits, and we didn't know about them before. Um, this is a really cool place. This is our fifth area. This is in the I-17-179 junction area. So on your way towards Flagstaff or turning off towards Sedona, you're basically going to drive by or through really big landslide deposits. Um, we named this big one in the middle the runaway ramp landslide, and that's because there's a runaway truck ramp right within the landslide mass. Here we have an aerial photo taken with a drone of the runaway ramp landslide and uh, ACGS Jeep parked for scale. It's really tough to get this whole landslide in one shot, even with a drone, because it's so extensive. Uh, we have a head scarp that kind of wraps around the back here, Colorado Plateau in the background. And uh, these basalt rubble ridges are almost like vertical cliffs in person. They don't look that big at this scale, but they're pretty massive. Beginnings of the runaway truck ramp within the landslide mass. Here's another figure with a uh, drone acquired topographic data that kind of shows this runaway ramp slide, actually just a portion of it, because again, this is a really large feature, but you can see the limits of the slide here. And these are those basalt rubble ridges from the previous photo. Uh, one interesting thing is you have landslides that are kind of moving to the south, west and west. You also have landslides that are moving off the same mesa in the other direction, but basically they all coalesce together to form one really massive landslide complex. Here's a before and after figure. Uh, so this is what we had in ASLID before we started this project. And here we are now. So basically, we expanded mapping in areas one and three, uh, new landslide mapping in areas two and four. Um, but basically, a combination of the topographic data and field mapping with the drone really helped us delineate more accurately landslide deposits in this area. Um, all right, so the end result of this, this study is that basically everything we looked at, we changed. We have modification and improved mapping to nearly every mapped landslide polygon within the study area. Uh, when we started, we had about 62 landslide polys covering about 24 square miles. Now we're up to 109 at 31 square miles. Uh, we found landslides in areas that we didn't have them before at all, including the Camp Verde, Lake Pleasant, and Flagstaff areas. Uh, there's some landslides in Walnut Canyon we didn't know about before. Um, one of the take home things we saw is where the geologic setting is favorable and you have enough incision, you get a lot of landslides. So we have these landslide clusters. Um, so those are the areas that I would keep my eye on if I was planning to develop important infrastructure through like areas that you know, might be prone to more landslides or at least ongoing movement in existing landslides. A surprising number of these are cut and traversed by the freeway with rockfall being a hazard almost everywhere, even in areas that are not through landslides, but especially those that are. Everything we mapped is available online on the AZGS Hazard Viewer, and it will be coming out shortly as a special paper. Okay, great. Thanks for hanging out and listening to what I had to say. Uh, funding for this project was provided by AZDEMA. We really enjoyed working on this, and we hope we can do more work like this in the future. Thank you.